Hello again and welcome back everybody to another edition of the Row Report. I am your World 2 IC and we're going to continue our little mini series of tools to consider for SHTF. Now if this is your first time to this little mini series, allow me a moment to recap. So I got an interesting email from a uh, new subscriber and uh, new to prepping as well single mom who just moved into a new place uh, was trying to do some things realized she did not have the correct tools for the job and uh, in a proper mindset she reached out to me and said hey what would be some good tools to have for shtf and uh, the more I responded, the more I realized, hey, there's a lot of tools out there, right? So I broke it up into this little mini series. Uh, in the end over here, there will be little cards that you can click. One of them will take you so you can watch the entire series. So we covered a lot so far, and uh, this may be the last one for now into our mini series. And we're going to kind of wrap it up for now. And so in this one, we're going to cover kind of the miscellaneous tools or other things to keep in mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to be lighting. Uh, lighting, uh, in at least my opinion, is a tool and you will need it in order to use other tools when there is no natural light available. So you may have to do some repairs or do other things when uh, maybe it's storming out a very very cloudy day maybe something at night and so you're going to need lighting now you can do a bunch of different things you can do candles and there's a lot of different things that you can do you can even make your own candles but candles is a very good way to provide yourself light uh, uh, there's a lot of safety things in with that but uh, you, most of you if not all of you are uh, functioning adults so uh, just be mindful if you're going to use candles next is going to be the good old-fashioned oil lamp now uh, in my opinion that's kind of a, a prepper must have but uh, again that's my own humble opinion uh, an oil lamp is much safer but still can cause uh, major damage if, if you're not careful uh, so just be careful operating uh, an oil lamp but you uh, have a lot more versatility with an oil lamp uh, than you do with a candle. And so uh, if you do not have one, I would highly encourage and, and even recommend to go do that. Uh, probably one of the things that most of you have is going to be things like uh, LED flashlights, uh, lamps, things like that. <clears throat> now, there is the old school, the ones that take, you know, just the regular replaceable bulb. Uh, we have moved on from that. So your bulbs will go bad. Uh, you can break your bulb. There's a lot that can go uh, kind of wrong with that. And LED has done uh, come a long way. The prices come down. The quality has gone up, depending. I know there's bad ones out there. Uh, and then also the rechargeable. And so there's a lot of them out there that come with their own solar panel. Uh, as well as uh, different ways to be able to recharge them. And so that way you don't have to carry around spare parts, spare batteries, uh, and a whole bunch of like things like that. Uh, make some lighter, make some, uh, you know, uh, just overall a better choice. So uh, I would imagine you have at least a flashlight, but lighting at night I think is going to be very, very important for multitude of reasons. But I just wanted to cover that. Next in the, the series is going to be comms or communications. And so that's going to start off with two-way radio. Uh, that is things like a walkie-talkie. And, uh, you know, I know that this is, again, going to come in different shapes, sizes, uh, colors. You can get them from different manufacturers, different price points. Uh, when it comes to a two-way radio, we're talking just a walkie-talkie pretty much. And so... Uh, you know, even the little kids ones, uh, they still work as a walkie talkie. They're still a two way radio. And to be able to give uh, a child like that a way that they have communications, the way that they can still uh, get a point across from a distance, uh, it, it, trust me, it's well worth it. Uh, 
and I know that you have drawbacks on two-way radios. Uh, we've talked comms here a lot. I did want to mention them. Uh, there's a there's a lot of different ways you can go about. So you can get into citizen ban, or if you don't know what that means, that is CB, you know, your truckers and all that. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that preach against it. Uh, I am actually one that is for it. A lot of people have CB. You really don't need anything to have a CB to transmit or receive uh, because it is so widely available and so many people have it and you basically don't need anything in order to operate it. Um, it's going to be one of those ones. It might be a thing to get information early on because there's going to be a lot more people that have that than the next ones that we're going to talk about. And so it's going to be, if you have some scenario where, um, cell phone and things like that, uh, internet, all that, it goes down, then you have something to where, uh, people will have CB and they will be able to communicate. Next is going to be an amateur or as maybe better in the prepping sphere, the ham radio. Uh, that's going to be something that you're going to be able to reach out a little further. Keep in mind, you do not have to have a license to receive, but you must have a license to transmit. Uh, it's not that difficult to get. And, uh, you know, if that's something you're interested in, by all means, there's plenty of people out there that go through uh, radio made easy. Well, we talked about it. Uh, if you want more information on comms, I would point to him. That's his area of expertise. But, and, and then, you know, another one would be shortwave radio. Uh, again, with all of these, it's going to be one that you're, you're not going to buy a, a ham radio, a shortwave, or anything like that. Break it out of the box and know exactly what you're doing. There's a lot more into it. I don't want to scare you away and make it sound like you have to be a rocket scientist in order to operate it, but... Uh, there, there is some stuff that goes along to it. So moving on is going to be things like a sewing kit. Uh, and in that, I would also include patches of various materials. So, uh, you know, if, if I take my shirt and I get a little slice right there, I can sew it and patch my clothing instead of just throwing it away. Uh, if it's a little bit bigger, that's where your patch would come in and keep in mind the different materials. So I don't want to take a, uh, uh, denim like blue jeans and try and sew it on here. Will it work? Yeah, absolutely it will. But now you're changing everything. You have a very lightweight cotton t-shirt. Now you're putting bulky, uh, heavy denim on there. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be better if you have patches of different sorts. Uh, keep in mind that once you get to the point that you have more patches on there than actual clothing, it might be time to go ahead and rip that up into a rag and uh, rags are going to be extremely critical to have. They're going to have a, a ton of different uses, especially when the SHTF event happens. You're not going to be able to run out to Walmart and buy new t-shirts or buy rags or buy towels or anything along the sorts. You have to make do with what you have or what you can make. And so, uh, you know, when it comes to things like that, uh, it's better to get what you can now. Uh, it's never one of them things that you can have too many rags, uh, too many uh, bath towels, things like that. Uh, next is going to be something I know I'm going to come off a little biased. Is going to be paracord and knowledge of the basics that you can do with it. Once you get a basic knot uh, or a weave or however you want to say it on a paracord, uh, it gets you into a lot of things. You, it opens so many doors. And so you're going to be able to uh, make things on the fly. So if your leather belt breaks, uh, you know, temporarily or even permanently, you can weave into and make your own paracord belt. Uh, you get a rifle sling that breaks, or maybe you don't even have one. Uh, paracord, now you have a new rifle sling. Uh, there's a ton of different things that you can do with paracord. Really, it's almost limited to your imagination. So that's why I highly, highly recommend it. Next is going to be fire. And so when we're talking about tools for fire, uh, the first one that, that everybody should have, I mean, this is a prepper basic, is your good old fashioned Bic lighter. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how many different ways and how great you are. You can have uh, you know, a bow drill, you can be able to start it with a magnifying glass or, or this or that. Uh, ask any uh, survivalist, and they're going to tell you uh, 
uh, if, if the option is there to grab a Bic lighter, they're going to grab that first. Next is going to be matches. Now, again, there's going to be a lot of different ones. You're going to have uh, the material it's made out of, they're windproof, uh, waterproof, uh, the stormproof ones. Uh, there, there's a lot into it when it comes to matches. Um, now, keep in mind that a match is better than no match. So, you know, again, everybody's on different price points. I know I'll get it in the comments. Well, stormproof matches aren't that expensive. I know that they're not, but you can buy a heck of a lot of regular old matches, just a little old school book of matches than what you can buy for a little box of the stormproof. I know the stormproof are better, but you give me 20 stormproof or 500 of the other ones, I'll take 500 of the other ones. Just my humble opinion. Uh, next is going to be a ferro rod. Uh, they're very cheap and expensive, uh, and, and they're pretty easy. You know, uh, it's one of the ones that they're lightweight. You can dangle off a lot of things. Uh, it's kind of a prepper basic on those. Make sure you know how to use it, though. There's a bunch of people that buy them and don't know what they, you know, what to really actually do. They've never actually started a fire. If you buy one or if you have one, start a fire, go out and, and light a fire, and then stomp it out and get a little bit of something else and restart a fire and do it again and again and again until you get comfortable and you know how to do it uh, next is going to be the old school flint and steel uh, if you've ever watched any of the old movies to where they take that uh, flint stone and their sword and they strike and that's how they uh, get a uh, spark for flame there you go. There's your concept. And so, uh, you know, Flint, you could, if you really wanted to, go out into the wilderness and pick up Flint off the ground. That is absolutely free. Steel would be your knife. Every prepper should have a knife. Uh, hands down, no questions asked, you should have some sort of blade. And so there you go. Steel, Flint. Now you have fire tools. Next, we're going to get into hunting. And so when we get into food, uh, we're going to start off with hunting, and that is firearms and ammunition. Uh, you need the correct firearm for what you are trying to take down. Uh, yes, you can take a, a squirrel with uh, a 12 gauge and a deer slug. There's probably not much left to eat afterwards. Uh, vice versa, enough uh, 22 and things like that. Uh, we'll, we'll take down the grizzly bear. I, I know I'm going to get the comments on that one. But again, how much ammo and everything are you going to expand versus what you're trying to take down? So make sure that you have the correct firearm and the correct ammunition for what is local to you and what you plan on eating. Uh, next is going to be the bow and the arrows. Uh, for me, I'm not a good bowsman, okay? I, I do not have an actual bow uh, or a crossbow, a longbow, anything along those lines. Uh, I take it back. I have a, a crossbow. I do not have a compound bow. Uh, I am decent with my crossbow. And so uh, I do not have that many bolts for it. But it's one of the things that I'm trying to practice and get a little bit better. I'm honest with myself about it. Uh, for me, it's almost into that thing that if I had to go into combat and it was uh, hand to hand, or you could give me a bow and arrow, uh, I feel more confident hand to hand <laughs> than with the bow. So uh, uh, just, just me giving honesty on there. Next is going to be things like traps and snares. Uh, you could also put in uh, fishing stuff and uh, like a fishing net into there. Uh, when you get into traps, snares, nets, things like that, those are the things that is a passive food source. So all you do is you set it and you walk away and you go do other things and let it do its job. Uh, sometimes you will get lucky and you will get something. Sometimes you do not, but all it takes is for you to walk to a place and set it up. That is your calories. When you're doing all sorts of other things of hunting and all that, you're expending calories. And this way you can basically in a few minutes time, uh, give yourself a good chance to get something for uh, relatively no calories. So uh, make sure you you look into that. Uh, also, if you buy them, make sure that somebody shows you how to use them. There's a bunch of people that I know that they will run out and they will buy a trap, they will buy a snare, they will do various things. 
And then if that SHTF event ever comes, it's actually just a useless object because they have no idea how to operate it. Uh, or you can actually, especially with traps, cause self-injury. So make sure that you are educated in it. Next in the food is going to be gathering. So you're going to need things like buckets, uh, baskets, bags, uh, something like that. If you're going after something bigger like deer or whatnot, uh, maybe even a cart. Um, but for the most part, if you are gathering food, uh, you're going to want to have it to where even if it's in your own backyard, some way to transport uh, a good amount. You don't want to take in just a handful of potatoes. Uh, you want to take in, you know, a bucket of potatoes. So it goes in the same thing if you're out in the woods and you come across berries and things like that. Uh, it's going to be nice to have some sort of back, uh, bag or something pouch that you can throw them in to uh, transport. Uh, next is going to be food processing. So again, we just talked about it, but everybody needs a knife and knives have different uh, abilities. And so when you're talking about a carving knife to a fillet knife and different things like that, uh, I know that if you're skilled enough, you know, a knife is a knife and you can do things with it, but uh, look at what it is and try and get uh, a good amount of knives that are different that will help you in the job. Uh, probably most of us are not meat processors. Uh, if you are, you probably already have a ton of knives. And so uh, trying to process game or uh, do other things, you know, if, if all you have is a machete and you're trying to slice carrots, it can be done. It's not going to be fun. Well, I mean, it might be fun for some people, but it's not going to be easy. Put it that way. Uh, next is going to be a grinder. It's going to be able to take products like uh, corn and wheat and things like that. So you can turn it into uh, ingredients. You can turn it in so you can get flour and other uh, different products. Um, and, and there's other things out there. So you can strain and get uh, different like vegetable oil and things like that, uh, which would also bring into a strainer uh, in order to clean things. It'd be nice to be able to put them in something, uh, run clean water over it and clean your items. And then the last thing on that was going to be something to mash. So that way you can crush things up. Uh, it's just, it's one of those things that a lot of people overlook and take for granted. Uh, next thing in food is going to be the cooking and eating part. And so I know it's going to go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Pots, pans, and skillets. Uh, skillets, I would highly recommend cast iron, pots, and pans. There's a ton of different ones. Um, and really... You could probably go to a flea market or a garage sale and pick up a whole box of them for 10 bucks, something like that. You know, uh, they're usually pretty cheap for second hand. Uh, wash it up, clean it up, put it in some sort of bag and, and tuck it away. And there you go. Now you have pots and pans and whatnot. Uh, next is going to be something in order to eat off of. So bowls, plates and silverware. Uh, I know <laughs> I have to say it, though. You have to have something to eat off of. Uh, I know I'm going to get a ton of people. Well, you can just eat straight out of the pan. Well, yeah, you could. Uh, but when maybe you're uh, inviting some of the other people over, maybe SHTF has calmed down a little bit. And, uh, you know, everybody's starting to come back a little bit together. Uh, maybe you don't actually want to share the same bowl of soup with uh, five other people. So uh, having that might be considered a luxury for some. But uh, for me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and plan ahead and get things so I can eat separately, which would also bring in the same thing of a cup or canteen, because I don't really want to pass the same jug of water around and uh, share it with a bunch of other people. So uh, I will have my own. Uh, it, it just goes without saying uh, hygiene, sanitation, things like that is, is going to be very paramount. You don't need to be uh, spreading disease and all sorts of other things to everybody. So uh, just keep that in mind and then i'll end the uh that part of it with make sure you have some sort of uh napkin or something again you know if you're eating something your your fingers are getting uh, all messy your face is getting messy and things we're trying to go after hygiene you know you're trying to stay as clean as you possibly can uh, even if it's just something along the lines of a bandana or whatnot uh, just something so you can help clean yourself uh, I'm going to end this one with uh, preservation and food storage. So that's going to be your mason jars, canning jars, whatever you want to call them. Uh, make sure you have plenty on hand. Same thing with like Mylar bags or Ziploc bags. Items like salt. 
and uh, other containers. Just because you have food does not mean that you're trying to can it and store it over the winter. Uh, maybe you just need to uh, store some for a couple of days. And so you don't want to uh, go through and waste a jar. Uh, having something of a container to where you can just put basic food ingredients to keep, you know, bugs and dust and everything off of it. So uh, those are uh, basically what I've come up with. My list, I've tried to keep it short, uh, but uh, real quick. Salt is very, 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 very important, okay? Make sure you stock up on salt. Uh, I absolutely hate salt. I don't put salt in uh, any of my food or anything like that. Uh, I am a huge advocate against salt because there's so many things that have salt in it. Uh, but when SHTF goes down, uh, there is going to be no more salt in commercialized food because it will all be gone. So you will have to. Your body needs salt. Uh, so you will have to have it for daily intake as well as a food preservation. And uh, if you're like me in Ohio, you're not just going to walk out and get salt. Okay. So you're going to have to stockpile it. Make sure you have salt. So with that, that's what I've got for you. Uh, I know I've left a bunch of things out and I kind of did that on purpose. I wanted to do this as a way to get you to think. There's a lot of things that we can go and add to this list. If you have something to add to the list, let me do it down in the comment section below. It'd be great to, as a community if we all get together and we can make a really, really good list. Uh, if I said something you agree with, let me know. Uh, something you disagree with, again, let me know. Uh, we're just all having a good time and uh, conversating and coming up with good ideas as a prepping community. So if you made it to this far in the video, guess what? You rock. I appreciate you so much for spending a little bit of your time with me. I hope you have an amazing day and a blessed day. And I want to remind you to stay tuned because there's definitely more information to come. And with that, I want to remind you above all else, please remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.